The evolution of inclusion is a never-ending process. There's always something to learn and absorb. For Janella Bella, she's singularly focused on ensuring that diversity, equity, inclusion, company corporate culture, race, and education are all placed in the same melting pot of progress. She's the founder and principal consultant at Diverse Solutions Strategy Firm, a firm which aids companies in their corporate culture through growth and transformation by utilizing personal assessment, coaching, and training. She's also a lead business advisor for We Tech Alliance. She joined me this week to discuss how she uses her own lived experience to fortify positive changes in education and diversity and inclusion. I'm Kevin McShann. Let's have this conversation. a few seconds and I'll welcome you to the program and I'm excited to learn all about your business ventures, a little bit about your personal life and what what keeps you busy in these uh, snowy streets of winter these days. So great to see you and uh, thanks so much for being here. Wonderful. So Janelle, I'm wondering if I can start you off by asking you about your company and uh, the, the good work that you do in terms of helping uh, companies develop a a positive company culture? So Diverse Solutions Strategy Firm is developed based on the idea that bringing a third party into your organization can kind of create a clearer view of the diversity, equity, and inclusion strategies that are being implemented or the solutions and strategies that are being enacted to best um, develop corporate company culture. So my work is to help create those um, solutions and strategies and help streamline the approaches that are potentially already being um, enacted or that need to be enacted to help create a more inclusive environment. And tell me, what uh, do you hope uh, uh, your clients take away in terms of uh, molding their company culture after they finish working with you? I find that a lot of the clients I work with, um, it's not so much that they didn't have the initiative prior to engaging with me. It's that there's many people that are in a position where they just don't know how to take steps forward. They are very um, welcoming to the support that I can provide, but after we work together, they can take their awareness and their initiative to the next level by having um, applicable strategies that work towards the solutions and what they are trying to accomplish. Now, your company also provides uh, progressive solutions that are responsive, responsive rather, to racial and um, cultural needs of the society. So, can you t- can you ex- uh, expand a little bit more on, on that for me? Yeah, definitely. We uh, focus on racial and cultural needs because that's an area of my specialty, diversity is a huge platform that encompasses many marginalized groups. So I like to focus what I know, and that has to do specifically with racial and cultural needs. And when it comes to the progressive solutions, um, a lot of what I'm doing is interacting with the organizations and the people within the organization that would um, benefit from racial and cultural diversity change and working with them collaboratively to create solutions um, within that workplace that benefit not only employees, but the clients that companies engage with as well. 
And I know that you're also a business advisor for the folks over at WeTech Alliance. I've done some work with them as, as well. So I'm wondering uh, your thoughts on the evolution of STEM careers here locally in Windsor and Essex County, the progress we've made and where you think uh, progress still needs to happen. WeTech and Adam Castle are opening up the doors for diversity, um, equity, and inclusion within their clientele, but also within Windsor-Essex. Um, STEM careers and STEM opportunities in Windsor-Essex are growing exponentially, and the opportunity for growth in careers in that field are there. Um, WeTech specifically is focusing on allowing um, client demographics to kind of navigate the supports that they're receiving as well as they're using that opportunity to build um, businesses within Windsor Essex with the strong corporate culture to benefit themselves and our community as we grow together. And I know that uh, a big focus uh, for you also is, is promoting uh, the need for women in these leadership positions in terms of STEM careers in Windsor and Essex. So can you also tell me your thoughts on how we get more women in leadership in powerful positions within our economy as well? I think that the increase um, in women in representation and the roles that women have comes with the idea of welcoming diversity. Um, diversity itself is kind of what we need to do, but moving into the how we're doing it is that inclusion aspect. So having women, having um, people of color, having people with disabilities, having that diverse representation is one thing. And a lot of companies are checking off those boxes by including those people. And now we need to move towards the inclusive aspect where we're actually allowing those voices to be heard and giving them not just a seat at the table, but a voice in the conversation. And as we do that, I believe more women will take powerful roles in organizations and as well as everyone um, of marginalized groups will have that opportunity as well. And I'm, I'm going to ask you uh, specifically now about uh, individuals with disabilities, because I always say that inclusion for people with disabilities in the workforce is the gateway to independence. So I'm wondering your thoughts on uh, that sentiment as well as, as, well as how uh, we get more people with disabilities infused into the workforce. I 100% agree with you that inclusion in the workforce does lead to independence. And I think that it creates that narrative where everyone is capable and everyone has value that they can provide to companies and organizations. So as um, companies become more aware um, of how inclusion affects innovation, it, include, it improves uh, profitability, it includes the um, actual excitement of employees within the workplace and all of these things kind of roll together to create a better business model and it creates more success for businesses and as organizations recognize how these positive changes occur then the inclusion of people um, of various groups and especially people with disabilities will be more included just in response to being aware of the benefits of it. And I know that uh, a big part of your work is also fortifying positive changes uh, in the education commu community as well. So I'm wondering uh, what you wanted to share in that regard as well. So as a teacher, um, I teach with Greater Essex County District School Board right now. And um, my master's work was in um, education development and representation in education. And I find that the more we represent uh, marginalized groups or various uh, races or cultures, um, we are able to have more success with the people that are of those groups who are seeing themselves. And within education, as we show that every person is valid and that every person has the ability to, to properly and effectively engage in conversation, then we're validating these people and welcoming them into the conversation that already exists as our dominant narrative in society. And if people want to get in contact with you, how uh, uh, can I do that? So they can connect with me through my website, diversesolutions.ca, um, or my name, Janelle, J-A-N-E-L-L-E, 
at diversesolutions.ca. So either connection and I would be more than happy to converse with anyone on any things that they have a uh, concern in regard to diversity, equity, and inclusion in the workplace, in education, or general society. Fantastic. And just before I ask you my last question, I'm also curious to know, know what would be your parting message to any business uh, community leader who wants to increase their level of awareness or uh, involvement in sort of uh, promoting inclusion? I think the biggest message that needs to be shared is to not be scared. Um, many people are fearful to engage in these discussions because they don't want to say the wrong thing or they don't want to come across as being um, labeled as something. But in reality, everyone that is willing to help with inclusion on any level is open to having those conversations candidly and without judgment. And so my biggest message is to just dive in and see where you can grow rather than being uh, fearful of the potential backlash because it's not there. People want to help and people want to engage. And Janelle, as you know, we have a little bit of a personal connection as I went to elementary and high school with your husband. So I'm wondering when you're not working, what do you and uh, Josh like to do for fun? Uh, well, we're, we live in the county, so a lot of our time is spent outdoors um, with our dog, um, Zoe, or we are at the gym. He's very into fitness, and um, other than that, I really enjoy reading um, and kind of just building my awareness of my community, but also participating in my community. Um, I work with the downtown mission, unfortunately, not so much recently with the effects of COVID, as well as other programs that support the development of our community on all levels. Fantastic, Janelle. It was lovely uh, reconnecting with you and uh, sharing our mutual passion for inclusion and acceptance for all people of all abilities. Great to see you, and I want to thank you for your time this afternoon. It's most appreciated. And thank you for having me, Kevin. Fantastic.